to Monday night, the gate of Shwash. The topic of today is Etzot. Etzot Maasiyot. What do we have to do in order to come ready to Rosh Hashanah? We spoke about it yesterday, that today, this week, is the last week of the year. Why did I say the last week? So yesterday we mentioned Acharon, Acharon, Chaviv. The last one is always the favor. The last one is always the favor. And what you're doing in the end is what, this is what people remember. You can be amazing in relationship and then in the last minute you blow it and this is what people remember. They don't remember the 20 years, they don't, they don't remember the seven years of school. If in the last month you got kicked out from the school, this is what everybody remember. It was the president of Israel that not getting into politics, but he got, he got a, uh, sue, and the courthouse decides against him. He left the position, he left everything, and from then, this is what people remember. 25 years of his life he gave to the land of Israel, and people remember the last month. When you're the last speaker, you know that, that the last speech that they remember, the last speech. Not the five rabbis that spoke before. The last speaker is actually the best speaker. Not because he's the best, because he's the one that people remember. So when we're approaching the last week of the year, this Monday is the last Monday of the year, this Tuesday is the last Tuesday, next Tuesday is not this year. It's actually a different year. Baruch Atah Adonai. Eloheinu Melech HaOlam. Shayakon, Niyah B'dvon. Whatever I tell you, when we remember that this is the last, what do we have to do? What do we have to do to come ready to Rosh Hashanah? To be signed and sealed to Rosh Hashanah. Merit Agmara. Rosh Hashanah Tezayin Amut Bet. Arba'a Devarim Mekarin Gezar Deno Gezar Deno Shel Adam. There are four items. From these four, we're going to take only one. Actually, two. The first one is tzaka. Tzaka meaning shinu Hashem, changing your name. I don't recommend nobody to change the name so fast. Your name is your essence. I'm not from the rabbis that change names every Monday and Thursday. Be very careful how, which names you use. Do not change the name so fast. One. Shinui Hashem, changing a name, changing action, meaning do teshuvah, accepting upon yourself mitzvah, and then tzaka, what is tzaka? To scream. Screaming, when I say screaming, I'm talking about tefillah. If there's anything that affected in our times, and this week, is to pray to Hashem from the bottom of your heart. Literally to take every second the Tehillim, to come into Minyan every day, and to pray to Hashem and to ask Hashem, God, please sign and send me to Ktiva v'chatima tova, l'shana tova metuka. You need to get merry, you need to be uh, uh, healthy, you want to have a long life, you want to have, you want to be happy. This is what they requested of these times. Use these weapons. Vayitza'aku el Hashem. Vayitza'aku el Hashem. There's a big difference between tza'aka and za'aka. What's the difference? You see, there are four people that have to say thank you to Hashem. What's the name of these four people? A person that crossing a river have to say thank you. A person that going into the desert and pass the desert have to say thank you. Right? Right? Have to say thank you. Now, a person that coming out from the hospital have to say thank you. And a person that come from a prisoner, being a prisoner, have to say thank you. Dr. Daniel, four people have to say thank you. Prisoners, 
a sick man, a person that over, over, overcome the rivers and the boats, and a person in our days, an airplane, and a person that coming in in the desert. The whole time desert was some place that was very dangerous. Now, happened to be that in this pasuk, and four of these items, the word tsaaka, screaming, uh, refer. And two of them, they said vayitsaaku, and two of them, they said vayizaaku. In Hebrew, is a big difference between tsaaka to zaaka. What's the difference? When we refer to doctor, and when we refer to prisoner, we said zaaka. When we refer to the <coughs> river and to the, to the uh, um, desert, we said tsaaka. You know what's the difference? Dr. Yaakov, you know what's the difference between prisoner and a person that came out from a hospital? Even though he screamed to Hashem, he doesn't really scream from the bottom of his heart. You know why? Because deep down, he counts the doctors. No, my doctor is a special doctor. When you're in a prisoner and you need to come out from the jail, as much that you believe in God, you always said, no, no, no. My lawyer is amazing. You know, yes, I believe you, God, but I still need to have connections and the strong connections. So automatically, the screaming is not strong. It's not from the bottom of your heart because you don't, you don't feel so much pressure. You know when Rubashkin, God saved Michelle in his stories? When he got the final decision from the Supreme Court that he will never be out of the jail. Rubashkin, one of the rabbis in Crown Heights that had a claim against him, and he went to the jail for 21 or 22 years. He was in the jail for eight years. Unreal, already eight years. He went and made appeal and appeal and appeal to go out. Jewish claim against him. And he never succeeded. Until he got the last <coughs> letter. And the last letter said, Mr. Rubashkin, your last request, you can appeal three times, fell down. The Supreme Court decides that you will never be out until you finish the, your, your sentence. Meaning, it was eight years, another uh, tw uh, 13 or 14 years. In this moment, what do you do? What do you do in this moment? No lawyer. He had the best lawyer in the world. He had all Chabad. All the Jewish world was there to support him. <coughs> what do you do in this moment? Yeah. He went into the room and he started to pray. But he said that tefillah was different. You know why? Because this tefillah was, God, you're the only one. That's it. Now there's no other connections. I'm not, I don't count the shatran, the matchmaker, not the doctors, not the position, not the offer, not the job offer. I count on you. When a person come, coming into this situation, he's screaming from the bottom of his heart. A person in the desert is screaming because only God can help him. A person in the sea, like the Titanic, when the water is, nobody can help you except God. This is screaming, shouting. But a person that is in prison, but I have a good lawyer, right? I have a good uh, pilot, the pilot, and the pilot. No, I have a good pilot. I have a good doctor. No, no, no. That feeling that we have to refer when we pray to God in this moment, especially in Rosh Hashanah, <coughs> you have to be. Lev nishbar v'nitke elokim lo If you want the judgment, to be soft. When you're praying in Rosh Hashanah, you have to come from a position. God, you're the only one that can help me. That's it. No connections, no advice, no nothing. Where am I? You're the only one. When a person comes with a broken heart like this, his tefillah will be accepted. The Gemara said, Baba Metziah, Samachai Amud Alef, the Gemara shared with us a story, a very rare story. But today we, we might going to give to this story one or two explanations. Let's go with one and we're going to see if we have enough times. Story being said, Rabbi Yudan Asi went into the street. Rabbi Yudan Asi was one of the biggest rabbi in the time of the Bibles in the Gemara. 2,000 years ago was the biggest rabbi. He's walking on the street, the biggest rabbi in the generation walking. 
And you see a, a sheep run away from the shochet. The shochet, the, the slaughter, the, you know the person that in charge to kill the animals? According to Judaism, we call them shochet. He is chasing after the, the sheep, and the sheep is run, running. And the other guy with the knife. <laughs> you know the big knife. I know because my father knows the shochet. When I came to the wedding, he showed me the big knife. He said, Rabbi Wagner, it's better for you to behave well with my wife, with your wife. She is his daughter. Until now, when he's calling, I hear the, the you know, you prepare the knife. With the, I hear the stones with the knife. So how is my son and know my daughter is doing? I'm doing just fine. <laughs> I'm behaving well. You see, he's chasing the sheep. And the sheep see Rabbi Yudan, I see, you know what the sheep is doing? He's going under the clothing, under the suit of Rabbi Yudan, and I see, like to hide. And you know what Rabbi Yudan, he said? He told the, the sheep, why are you hiding? This is your purpose in life. Sof Adam Lamut, the Sof Be'eman Shrita. The purpose of every man is to die one day. This is where we should him. And the force, we're going to get, we're all going to get to 120, we're going to die. So every day that you life, you're actually closer and closer to your purpose in the world. And animal purpose is what? To be killed. That's it, to be shechida. And you know what God did? The Gemara said for 12 and 13 years, Rabbi Yudah Anasi was, uh, was punishing. He was punished with the worst pain. He was screaming and shouting every time he went in to the bathroom. Shouting. God said, you had no mercy on these animals. I will never, I will not have mercy on you. Now, my question to you, that Rabbi Anasi did anything wrong. Dr. what are you going to do? You see a ship is coming, the shochet. What are you going to do? Go back. Mitzvah. We have to bring. Why Rabbi Anasi got punished? So badly. Listen to the explanation that I saw. You know why? When somebody come and put all his faith on you and is going under your wing, you cannot send them to be killed. When the sheep came under the clothing of Rabiuda and looked with his eyes, please save me. You know, you can you cannot. If the shochet is going to come to take it, he took it. But you cannot have such a coolness and bring him back to the Shechot. I depends my life on you. Have a mercy on me. When we come in Rosh Hashanah, Ashlech and Hashem v'u'yavcha, and we throw our faith on God and God only, God will never let us down, even if we're not worldly, even if we're not righteous, even if we're not in the highest position spirituality-wise, you put your faith in God. So the first message of tonight is tzaka, to scream to the Almighty God, but to scream and to pray from the bottom of your heart. Very simple. If you're going to do it, you're going to see this year that God will give you unlimited wealth. God will give you happiness. God will give you anything you wish and desires. God will give you joy and laughter from your children. God will give you the ability to get married this year. But all what you have to do is Ashlech al Hashem. Second topic is we have to prepare by giving tzedakah. Knowing to be that Erev Rosh Hashanah Erev Rosh Hashanah tradition wise I believe the Sefer HaRukeach read it to give a big tzedakah in Erev Rosh Hashanah. Tonight, am I going to explain you why charity is so important? Chudachat Benoneder, hopefully this week and Sunday, we will send to 40 different families, by Ezrat Hashem Benoneder, 40 or 50 families, food cooked with a sign and symbolize to their home from a restaurant all the way to their home in order that they're not going to cook. All the needy people in our communities will get food direct to their home. What does the chut is that? They're not going to have to cook. Everything is going to be the whole holidays. The whole holidays. Unreal, what is the chut? Why is it so important in these times? Chodesh Elul, and in this time, especially Rosh Hashanah, why? Rabbi Rabbi, first of all, which week, which parasha is this week? Atem, Nitzavim. 
כולכם היום. You standing today in front of me today. Uh, you standing uh, uh, in front of me today. Standing. Not going like this, not bending, not hiding, standing. When a person stands, meaning they have confidence. There's the difference between a person that have confidence or not. You can see that when people is talking, who have confidence and who is not, and the way that he's sitting and the way that he's standing. How can you stand? You know that every place that he said in the Torah, today refer to which day? Rosh Hashanah. How can you come stand in Rosh Hashanah? Which zechut can give you the privilege to come with so much confidence? Like for sure, you're being judged in favor. Today you're going to hear a few things you never heard before on charity. Unreal. First of all, the word Nitzavim. How do you write Nitzavim? How do you write Nitzavim? Nun, Tzadik, Bet, Yud, Mem. Nun, Tzadik, Bet, Yud, Mem. Right? Ben Chur and Binyamin listen well. What's the first letter of Nitzavim? Nun. Nun stands for Noten. The second letter is Tzadik, Tzedakah. The next letter is Bet, Baseter. The next letter is Yud, Inatzel. The last letter is Mem, Midin. Anyone that will give Tzedakah in a hidden ways, he doesn't know which family he got this Tzedakah. And the family doesn't know who gave it, will be saved and sa saved in the judgment day. Yud in a cell will be saved. Mem midin from the judgment. You hear that coin? Atem nitzavim. You know, in the week, this week, parasha, that always, always falling down the week of Rosh Hashanah. This week, portion of the week is telling us the second advice of today is charity, especially in hidden ways. You will never be judged. And you can come confident. You come to Rosh Hashanah like this. You don't have to hide. And I will tell you why, why. But we're just giving you introduction. How do we say it? Tzedakah tatzil mimavet. Tzedakah is guaranteed to save from any judgment against you, especially judgment of death. When a person is going to the hospital, I always tell the family, if he can give tzedakah himself, put the charity back next to him. And every morning, he's going to put tzedakah. And if not, you're going to put it instead of him. This is the best guarantee for a person to be saved from death. How do we say it? Which month we are? Elul. You know what Elul stands for? Elul. Aleph, Lamed, Vav, Lamed. Ish, Nereu, Umatanot, Laiv, Yonim. You have to increase the level of love and you have to give gift and food to the poor people. Why? Continue. צדק צדק תרדוף למען תחיה וירשת את הארץ. This week פרשה, maybe יאזינו. He said you have to chase after צדקה. In order to be alive. And then you're going to conquer the land. How, which, how do you say in Hebrew conquered? וירשת. Do you know if you switch the letter which, which names is coming? תשרי. Which month we're approaching? The month of Tifutish. If you want to be alive in this month and to pass Yom Kippur in Rosh Hashanah, chase after charity. Unreal, huh? How many pesukim? So why? Why? Why charity? The first explanation is measure to measure. We're all coming in to the Almighty God like a poor people. Kedalim verashim dafak, we knocking the door of God like orphan, like widows, like miskenim, like nobody. We beg in Hashem to give us. God said, no problem. I will check throughout the years how that you behave with the, people, with the poor people that knock your doors. And the way that you act with them, I'm going to act with you. If a poor person or rabbi came into the synagogue, and suddenly, instead of saying Shema Israel, one minute, it took you 20 minutes Shema Israel because you don't want to give charity. So what do you do, Shema? This way the, the rabbi is going to leave. Suddenly, Shema Israel from three minutes, take 20 minutes. God said, no problem. 
when you're going to come to me, I'm going to act exactly the same. If the rabbi is going to come twice, twice, in the same day, in the same morning, he's going to come twice. Many times they come to me twice or three times. So the rabbi Vaxley, now two minutes ago, he just got. <laughs> you know what they said? Thank you very much for coming once again. If if happened to be that you want to come another, don't worry, come. So many people in the community ask, Rabbi Vaxley, why do you have to give it twice? I said, because we come into God three times a day. Shacharit, Mincha, and Ravit. Morning, afternoon, and evening. And God said, ah, you don't want them to come to? Don't come to me twice. That's it. You come once, enough, enough. Leave me alone. Every year we come in again and again. And God never tell us, why you come twice? Why you come? What did God said? I'm happy to see. Don't worry, come. You're my son. The way that you act with the poor people, this is exactly the way that God will act with you. One reason. Second reason is that charity is so important. Second reason. Listen to this. Second reason. Because I'm a Aran Mipraik right. You know what's charity I said maybe two days ago? Charity is not money. When I'm giving $1,000, or $2,000, meaning it took me one week to make this money. You know, what I, you know what I did? I gave one week of life. You're giving life, measure to measure, you're going to get what? Life. People look and charity like money, money. No, it's not money. By the way, when you're going into the hospital, even if you don't give money, and you spend time with a sick person, when you have a person that come and ask you to speak with him, because he need your advice, he need your times, and you spend time instead of sleeping, you spend times. This is one of the greatest charity. Not everything have to be money. God said you give him life. Time is life. I will give you life. This is the second reason why. But listen to this reason. I want you to hear it. You never heard it before. The Pasuk said, Malve Hashem Chonendal, Vegmulo Ishalemno. Anyone that gives charity to a human being, to a poor man, you know who is the one that taking the loan? You know who is the woman, the one that taking the obligation to pay to pay you? What's his name? Boreonam. Meaning the Pasuk said in, in Mishlei. The King Solomon, the wisest man in the world history said, when you're giving charity, you're giving loan to the Almighty God. Now you have to remember the word loan. And God will pay you. He will give you life. He will give you parnasai. He will give you. But you have to remember, you have to. Now why is it important to know that you give him a loan? Why? Listen to this. Um, Dr. Daniel, I'm going to give you a scenario. Very common scenario. I'm working for you in the business, and happen to be that you and me have a dispute. We have argument. Now, I did something, or I did a job, or something. You know, you fix somebody a stuff, and they come to you and you say, you know what? I'm a Jew, and you're a Jew? I'm taking you to the courthouse. Because I didn't like the job. I want my money back. This okay, no problem. Which bad deen we go? You said, why are you choosing this bedding? Why are you choosing this rabbi? I don't know them. I don't know the community. Come to my bedding. Come to my community. My courthouse. Which courthouse we, f we follow in every argument that exists? Which co courthouse? The one that's suing or the, or the one that's being sued? The one that's being sued. The one that's being sued. One second. Yes, the defendants, yes, I didn't know how to say it in English. The one that means the defendants. We always follow the Nidba. Except Nidba meaning the one that being sued. Except one time. You know which time? Which time? This is the moment you came here. You know which time? When you're giving loan to someone, and now you have dispute. I gave you thousand dollar, Dr. Yaakov. And you claim that you pay me, I claim that you don't pay me. Who do we follow? I sue you for the money, right? I sue you. 
Now, in any other case of argument, we follow who? You. Except one time, when I give you a loan of money. In this case, we, so we follow the one that's suing. This is a unique, only in the case of loan. In loan, we always follow. Ay, ay, ay. The Benish Chai, the Chidai Kadosh. Do you know why it's important to give loans before Rosh Hashanah to the Almighty God? You remember how you give loan to God? By giving charity. And God, you know why? Because in Rosh Hashanah, God will take you into the courthouse. And which courthouse is that? Judgment. And you're going to, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. We have to follow my, I give you the loans. I choose the, the courthouse. And you know which one I'm going to choose in Rosh Hashanah? The merciful one. <laughs> The one that I have connection, the one that I know. You understand? Atem nitzavim. You can come in, stand still and say, God, you follow me, not I follow you. You follow me, meaning we come in into a courthouse that have a lot of mercy. And you have no choice because this is Allah. Ay, ay, ay. Go in, you hear that? Malveh Hashem. When you take, every time you help a needy person, you become a person that gives loan to the Almighty God. Unreal, huh? Unreal. Begmulo yishalimu. God will pay you. Whatever, Rabotai. The last one, we said three things. The first one is screaming and praying. But screaming, like nobody exists except Hashem. Praying, like nobody can help you except God. No, I'm going to come to Tefillah, but first of all, I have to, to invest money in the stocks. And first of all, I have to be in the office. And only if I have times, one of the uniqueness to come in the morning and to pray Shacharit is to tell Hashem, Hashem, before anyone else, I'm coming to you. And only after that. Second one is charity. Charity is something that we have to increase, especially in the last week, the last week of the year. Because measure to measure. Because when you give charity, you give time, you give life. And because when you give charity, you become a person that gives loan. And in case of judgment, in case of dispute, we always follow the courthouse of the one that gives loans. And not the one that took the loans. Last but not least. Appreciation. I'm always talking about it and it's so important. Whatever about time. We're coming into the Almighty God and Rosh Hashanah and we're asking, give me life, give me long life, give me panasa, give me marriage, give me and give me. The Zohar Kadosh Hait, one of the worst mekatregim, one of the worst devil against us in Rosh Hashanah is the one that called dogs. Why dog? Why, what dog is doing all day long? Have, have. You know what you have, have? And Aramit, have, have, meaning give me, give me. Give me, give me. We're always coming. Do you know the story? It was once a human being, a Jewish guy, went into heaven. After 120 years, he was a righteous man. They took him into Ganeden. But before heaven, he saw three, three rooms. He asked the angel, can I, walk to, can I walk into this room? So the guy said, okay, you're a righteous human being. You can choose any room. He said, open this door. He opened the door. Doctor, uh, uh, Daniel, you don't understand, Dr. Albert. The room is in the size of this world. Huge. And uh, what's it? Like China. 1.5 billion the angel walking. So the guy said, what? Why, why is the angel so busy? Every second, nobody rest. He said, you know why? Because this room is all the requested that God is getting every year. Every year, people is asking and asking. So all the letters, all the requests come to this room. Okay, he said, can you open the second room? He opened the second room also. Huge, big room. Like India, 1.3 Indian. One of them is walking, angels. Now he said, what are they doing here? He said, no, no, no. This room is, they separated the request, and the one that got refused, they send them refused, and the one that got uh, 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 authorized or approved, like the immigration, they send them back to another with the wish, with everything. Okay, so he said, well, how many rooms, huh? Everybody's busy. Can you open the last room? He opened the last room. He said, two angels, two angels sitting down. 
then the sofa, one table, and they sit in, relaxing. Massage, they have a massage, they have this, chilling, and they have music also. So I don't understand <laughs> what exactly happened in this room. Listen to what, what a story, what a story. He said, in this room is all the letter that people said thank you. And so far, nobody said thank you. <laughs> to request, we all export. To say thank you. We're coming into Rosh Hashanah. How many of us will say thank you? We all already have a shopping list. What exactly are we going to ask this year? The fact that God gave you a knife, but I'm not married yet. Yes, but you're a knife. You have the ability to see, to hear, to speak. You're healthy. Why you worry about? Why you worry about? I don't understand. Okay, so sp people spoke about you. They made me get, okay, they just clean you up. You come into Rosh Hashanah, you clean, clean. Shakranim, Ramayim, no problem, but you come clean. Clean, clean, kapara, you come clean. So what do you mean? You're alive. What do you have to be excited over? You have a children, you have a wife. Baruch Hashem, how many people is not married? How many people have no children? How many people are fighting for the liver, for the eyes, for the mouth, for the ability to speak? I met a person, he spoke with me a few days ago. It, it take them like 10 minutes to say one word, one word. You know how long it took him to repeat? And I'm talking all day long and speaking hours and giving classes after classes. Just let me wake up. We all have to wake up. How many of us coming in to Rosh Hashanah with the attitude to say thank you? All of us have attitude complaining. The two rooms is always busy. The two rooms is always busy. China and India is always busy. Always busy. One of them is asking, the other one is there. But what about the room? The room that really need to be a karatatov. You know where you, know you do it? I will give you a sign that you're going to remember in Rosh Hashanah. In Rosh Hashanah, something very strange happened in the Tfilah. Not only Rosh Hashanah, Rosh Hashanah and the whole 10 days of Teshuvah. Listen to this, very, very unusual. Now, we start, Shmona Yisrael, we pray, Shmona Yisrael, the 18th blessing. Now, what do we start? We add in a few paragraphs in the 10 days. The first one is, Zohrenu l'chaim, melechafetz b'chaim. Kodvenu b'sef chaim l'manach elokim chaim. God, please remember us for life. I mean, tell me this is a good request. But I don't understand. A poor man is also alive. A blind man is also alive. A mute and deaf is also alive. And what do we ask him? Only, only, only life. Only life. The second time that we add, Mi kamucha ava rachaman, zohir yitzurav berachamim lechaim. Give us life with mercy. Don't give us only life. We add in mercy. Okay, but you don't ask anything, you don't ask to get married, you don't ask livelihood, you don't. And then, in the end of that fila, in the end, what do we do? We add in another two paragraphs. tovim, give us a good life. Well, when the end is ready, give us a good life. And one extra, Write us in the book of life, livelihood, marriage, health. Why? You are gezerot of what? What exactly happened over here? And after that, Avinu Malkenu fully requested. Why are we going slowly? Why not to ask God give us life and a good life in Parnassah in the beginning? The simple explanation is, because when you come to ask something, it was once a poor man came into the restaurant and he wanted to get sandwich. So he came in to the owner of the restaurant and said, excuse me, can you give me a bread? Beautiful. Can you give me a bread, bread, one bread, one piece of bread? Can you say no to one piece of bread? You're definitely going to say, okay. He gave them. And then he said, can you give me another one, another one? Give me another one. I said, okay. Two pieces of bread, what's the big thing? He gave him. He said, can you give me tomato? Give me tomato, only tomato. 
okay, big deal, tomato, tomato. I give him a few slices of tomato. And then I said, can you give me pastrami or corned beef? Now we have a sandwich. Why you didn't ask in the beginning pastrami sandwich? Because then he's going to have to pay for it. So when you ask, you ask me, give me only bread, and then this is one answer. But the answer of tonight, no, 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 no. Listen to the real answer. Kan lifne modim, kan achare modim. Before modim, you know what's modim? Modim de Rabbanan is the part that we say thank you to Hashem. Before modim, all what you ask is only life. You don't deserve to ask anything. After you say thank you to Hashem, then you have the right to ask a good life and parnasa and livelihood and shiduchim. Nothing is more important from saying thank you in life. Oktov lechaim tovim. Ay, ay, ay. This week, parasha, we had Bikurim. Bikurim is the mitzvah that we're taking in. We're taking in. You know what we're taking? If you see a date, date, anything that coming in, anything that come in, you put a sign and the first options with a small basket, small basket, you have to go all the way to Yerushalayim to say thank you. And you cannot give it to the coin. You have to come to give it in Beit HaMikdash. Why is that? Listen to what Rav Rishlaki said. In this moment when you're coming in and you say thank you to Hashem, thank you for you being alive. Thank you for Yaakov Avinu that being saved. Thank you for the Jewish nation that left Egypt. We have to say thank you from there until our own life. A bad call, a voice from heaven coming and blessing this human being. Tiske lashana aba kadavaraze. You're guaranteed to have one year of life. And you're going to come once again to say thank you. You're coming into Rosh Hashanah, especially in the first day. Tina Kashya, the judgment is tough against all of us. Who, who, who can say, I can overview the judgment? The only things that you have to do is to say thank you. Thank you to Hashem. Thank you to Hashem for giving you everything that you have. And then a voice from heaven is going to come, the voice of the shofar, and will announce loud and clear, you're going to be married to come next year in Rosh Hashanah. And once again, to say thank you. Shana Tova Thank you very much.